Hi, and thank you for joining us for this week's Risk to Bin Market Week in Review for the week ending May 14th, 2010. I'm Mark Supase, and I'm joined as always by Eric Ristabin. Eric, good morning. Good morning. Glad to have you back after your travels of last week. Glad to be here. Uh, let me ask you this. So, uh, the European governments responded the way we thought they would to the Greek debt crisis. The markets liked it. The people there certainly didn't, though. <laughs> yeah. Not the most popular job right now being a politician in Europe. Was a response enough, though? The, the market's initial reaction would indicate that it probably was, at least for now. Um, but it's not going to stop the, the, the cycle of press, right? The political thing isn't going away. This is horribly unpopular for Merkel and um, Sarkozy. It's not, uh, <laughs> this is not, you know, the, uh, the playbook to get reelected is not write big checks to citizens of other countries. But, but the reality is they had to do it. We, we talked about the economic reality of having to do this. Um, and now they're li reaping kind of the political whirlwind. It's also kind of, you know, pointing out a couple of cracks in the EU. Um, but let's say the politics are not over by any long shot on this thing and it's going to be a long story, long leg story we're going to hear about most of the year. Does this still mean that the dollar kind of wins the ugly contest for now? <laughs> it is right now, yeah. The, 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 the euro as a currency is getting pounded. Um, there are concerns about uh, European growth rates, how, you know, given the burden of the sovereign debt issue that they're facing, um, how quickly are they going to be able to grow as, a, as an entity? Um, the other thing they're concerned about, obviously, is that they got to keep probably pretty accommodative monetary policy for a while um, in order to be able to, to kind of get provide enough liquidity to get through the sovereign debt crisis. So, yeah, it's probably not good for the euro. So let me ask you this then, uh, the long-term political and economic issue really now is just beginning and it yes. seems like for the long-term viability of the EU, you can make the argument that they have to really get a, have, be a ta become a taxing authority. Yeah, the uh, European Central Bank has monetary authority, right? They can print money. Um, they have no fiscal authority, right. meaning they can't actually get people to cut benefits or to cut spending and nor can they tax. Right. So uh, I think there's going to be a lot of discussion around um, can you actually have a central monetary authority, kind of a European, a, a kind of an economic union without a fiscal kind of counterbalance to the, 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 the monetary policy. Y you may be looking at, you know, a lot of cup debates around the creation of a, an actual kind of federal government, if you will, for the, for, the, for the EU. Well, and again, probably not a particularly popular idea. You know, having uh, <laughs> Belgians make, uh, you know, uh, benefit decisions and spending decisions in France will not be hugely popular, no. Probably not. Well, we'll keep an eye on that as yeah. always. All right, let me shift gears from Greece to the Gulf. Uh, uh -huh. the, the oil spill issue, obviously, uh, both short term and longer term for the uh, energy sector. What's your outlook there? What should investors keep their eyes on? Yeah, I, I think it's something to watch, right? It, you've got a lot of oil oil flowing into the Gulf. I mean, the, the first thing off the bat is that any kind of any offshore drilling in the Gulf has been suspended for 30 days. Um, I suspect that suspension will be longer than 30 days. Um, this well is basically a mile deep. Um, some of the big oil reserve fields that have been found recently are a lot deeper than that. So the technical challenges, from what I hear from the experts, the technical challenges of drilling in two miles of deep ocean right. are extraordinary. Um, and you know there is a, we're finding out there's a very much an environmental price to pay, sure. um, which will have also an economic you know price to pay. I mean the, the, the cleanups people are saying 20 billion and that may be light. Um, I think you got to watch it because I think the question becomes how do governments in the world respond? How restricted do they get in terms of um, the ability to drill um, yeah. offshore, the ability to drill other part of, in other areas? Um, how much does alternative fuels get out of this? I think really kind of watch the politicians and watch the regulators because that's where the news is going to be coming from. Well, and I would think as emerging market growth continues, the demand on fossil fuels is not going to go down. And so yeah. that's also going to put pressure on the, the, the oil market and, and potentially prices are going to go up. Exactly. If, if the regulators and the governments become highly restrictive of, of, of effectively, um, you know, how aggressively you can pull oil out of the ground. Yep. Um, and emerging markets don't stop growing, marginal, you know, the demand pressure on oil is going to be pretty extreme and you maybe see some interesting price movements in oil. Um, and uh, by interesting price movements, I don't mean down. So uh, investors in the energy sector, this is not time to panic, not time to bail, stay the course? I think it's the thing to watch is, is that how does the U.S. government respond to this okay. and what do other governments do? Um, you know, and w what is the long-term impact of, of this oil spill, which I imagine there will be a long-term um, um, impact beyond the extraordinary environmental impact that, that clearly the citizens of the Gulf are going to be feeling for, for a very long time. 
Okay, and so last question, uh, what's coming up next week uh, investors need to keep their eyes on? Yeah, I mean, there's, it's just, you know, I think this is going to be interesting. There's a, there is a European Central Bank meeting next week, which, you know, towards the end of the week, they should be uh, publishing some, yeah. some thoughts about it. I, I think that'll be kind of interesting. Otherwise, I think you're going to see just standard economic news, which, again, um, as we talked about last week, uh, the economic news that's coming out about April um, is, is, is fairly universally positive. All right, good stuff. Eric, thank you for your time as always, and thank you for joining us for this week's Ristobin Market Week in Review. We'll see you next week. Please remember that interviews were filmed as of the date mentioned in the video. These views are subject to change at any time without notice based upon market or other conditions and are current as of that date. It is made available on an as-is basis. Russell Investments does not make any warranty or representation regarding the information. While all material is deemed to be reliable, accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. This is not an offer, solicitation, or recommendation to purchase any security or the services of any organization. Investing in capital markets involves risks. Principal loss is possible. There is no guarantee the stated outcomes in the presentation will be met. The video may contain forecasting or other forward-looking information. This information is inherently uncertain and may be incorrect. This is a presentation of Russell Investments. Nothing in this presentation is intended to constitute legal, tax, securities, or investment advice, nor an opinion regarding the appropriateness of any investment, nor a solicitation of any type. The contents of this presentation are intended for general information purposes only, and should not be acted upon without obtaining specific legal, tax, and investment advice from a licensed professional concerning your own situation and any specific investment questions you may have. Russell Investment Group is a Washington, USA corporation which operates through subsidiaries worldwide, including Russell Investments, and is a subsidiary of the Northwestern Mutual Life Insurance Company. Copyright Russell Investments 2010. All rights reserved.